I want to begin this series on getting started as a Christian by looking at a little word that makes Christianity Christianity. It's the DNA of who we are as Christians. But I want to warn you, it's a radical idea. It's something that goes against the grain for us as humans. I was talking to somebody about this concept the other day and they said, that's not how it works. That's not how the world works. So we need to understand what this little word grace means. To do that, I want to go to a passage in Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2, verses 4 to 5. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Basically, those two verses are an epic before and after story. The before part of the story is that we were dead. We, we were estranged from God. We were caught up in a life, living life our own way without him, of attributing ultimate value to created things instead of the one who made them. And the graphic way of Paul describes that is we were dead. We were dead. The thing about being dead is you're powerless to do anything about it. You can't make yourself undead. And most devastatingly about death is you can't be in relationship. There is no relating in death. But God has done what we could not do. That's the point of this passage. God has made us alive from being dead. That's the after side of the story. Why has he made us alive? Well, according to that passage, it comes out of God's richness. He's, he's wealthy. Wealthy not in money and possessions, although he does own the whole world, but wealthy in mercy, in love. See, that's what motivates God to make us alive to do what we can't possibly do. He loved us even when we're in that situation of being dead to him and he takes the initiative. How does he do, it, do that? He sends his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. That is to take the punishment that our life of ignoring God deserved. And what's more, he raised him back to life to show that that work is accomplished but also to help us be alive to God. It's like the pattern of Christian life. We die to our lives and we are made alive to God with Jesus. That's the how. The main point of this passage though is that our standing with God, our relationship with God, our salvation is pure gift. It's a gift of grace. That's a good way to describe grace. As he goes on in the passage of verses 8 and 9, he says this, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. So that no one may boast. This is why he's done it this way. You see, the human default position is to sort of reach up for God, to, to do things to gain his acceptance. But that's not Christianity. Christianity is all about gift. It's about grace. It's about what God has done for us and outside of us. As a Christian, you never move on from grace. You, the, the base of your confidence that you are loved by God and your relationship with him is what Jesus has done for you outside of you in his death and resurrection. That's how God has showed his grace towards us in what Jesus has done for us, not what we do. Now, as you go on as a Christian, because this goes much, so much against the, the grain for humans, you will be tempted to, in subtle ways, move your confidence for your relationship with God, that you're accepted by him, to things other than what he has done in Jesus. It could be how you're performing as a Christian, how you're living. So you have this thing where when you're living well, you're in with God. When you're not living so well, you're out with God. That's not how Christianity works. Any struggle we might have to live for God, God is on our side. We are alive to him. He is with us in that. You don't move in and out. Another basis of confidence you might be tempted to move towards is amazing religious experiences, spiritual experiences. Yeah, they may be well be gifts of God and good things but to actually build your confidence on having them instead of not having them is a subtle move away from what God has done in Jesus to what we do it's similarly with religious practices say if I do those then I'll be acceptable to God if I keep doing those I'll be acceptable to God because this goes against the grain we will be tempted to move our confidence. That's a, that's a dangerous thing to do because we are only ever made alive to God through what Jesus has done, not through what we do. So never move on from grace. 
never move on from being thankful for this great gift and humbly and gratefully accepting it. We are acceptable to God because of what Jesus has done. It's a gift of God. It's all grace.